Hey, I'm on the edge of my seat here, back again with another brand new video. So here we have the, uh, excuse me? No, fuck you guy. And here, uh, he, okay, we're done with that fight. So anyways, uh, moving on to the next contender, we have a Kiwami exclusive boss fight, the Shifty Eyed Man. Now this guy could be a little troublesome, so if you want to deal with him, I suggest sticking with Tiger Drops for now. So anyways, moving on to the next fight, we're going to be fighting... We're going to be fighting Golf Man. I believe you've noticed by now that these Kiwami fights are quite short, and this is going to remain true for most of these fights with a few notable exceptions. And that's because you deal so much damage in this game. Like, I mean, well, okay, to be fair, I think it's more that you deal so much da damage as your fully upgraded dragon style. Like, Brawler, Rush, and Beast uh, deal good damage, but not like beastly damage or whatever. However, I do get some good use out of Brawler's full combo because you kind of deal like three consecutive heavy hits, which, you know, kind of stacks. But it's the dragon style that's just beasting most of the time. It's crazy. So anyways, on the strap for this guy, uh, the golf man really isn't that much of a contender. This guy's just kind of annoying, so I'm just kind of hitting him with combos. Now we get into some more elaborate strats with some of the later fights. And here we have our first actual boss fight, the prison dude. And you know, decent little starter. It still kind of feels like a tutorial fight because it, it kind of is. I mean, you know, kind of gets you accustomed to the game. You have a little group to fight. And then after you beat up the little group, you get to fight the actual main guy who has a pretty limited moveset. But you know, whatever. Ooh, check out that dodge. Though. He's very close. Uh, quite a bit has changed from Yakuza 0 to Kiwami 1 despite having the same combat system so sadly I'm not going to be pulling uh, some of the same tricks I did in Yakuza 0. Rush isn't nearly as overpowered but it still is in immensely essential to Kiwami 1 just more that you can't really use it as its solo style as effectively because there's just much better options. Ooh, check out, ooh. There we go, the Kiwami exclusive style change. I love when you can taunt just switch to another style, looks so dope. Like, look at that. Ooh, so sexy. And here I'm just gonna ignore the Kiwami Climax Heat action. And well, to be fair, at this point in the game, uh, you don't even have it, so... I mean, that's a bit of a bummer, but I just ignored it and killed him with Brawler. And here we go, we have our first Majima fight. Uh, he's unbeatable, but I beat him anyways, you spamming Tiger Drops. <laughs> Uh, in future Majima fights, I won't be relying on these Tiger Drop tactics, but for this one, uh, it's a mandatory loss, and if you lose, I mean, in order to restart it, I probably have to, like, load up a save, and I I'm just not doing that. I'm just gonna, I mean, Kiwami 1 just has probably the most overpowered Tiger Drop in the series, and hey, I mean, wanted to show it off on this little 1v1 fight, because I won't be doing it too much in future efforts, uh, aside from a couple notable exceptions. So here we go, we have Punk Ass Abe, and well, this guy's pretty much just kind of a, um, a kind of meaningless nothing fight, but hey, I just kind of thought I'd show it off. And also his moveset is a lot more aggressive than most nothing fights, and to be fair, Kiwami 1 in general is just aggressive. It is an aggressive game, whether that's intentional or just because they were rushing it out, I mean, you can leave that up to interpretation, I think it's a little bit of both. And here we have a uh, Yuya, which is our second, well, fight, still kind of in the tutorial range, but he has a pretty challenging early game moveset. He's quick, he's fast, and he's kind of hard to predict. Like this, he has the, uh, you know, the I'm good at fighting moveset, which most Yakuza late, like, you know, late series Yakuza boss fights have. So here I try to do a heat action, but then Yuya's like, nah, I'm gonna do my own heat action, and it has a little QTE, which I think is neat. And here you're gonna see your first climax heat action. These things are insanely overpowered, you're gonna see just how broken they are later on. In fact, I think they're a little too broken, I kinda wish they toned it down a bit. You know, I mean, most complaints I hear about this game are mostly that 
the healing phases like make boss fights feel like they drag on too much well i think like the little healing phase thing is kind of mute when you deal so much damage with the climax heat action but i can kind of go with the kind anyways here's our first little like major group encounter and kiwami one has a lot of these and i think the reason it has a lot of these is because it well the original game also had a lot of these but uh, yeah so here I'm just trying to keep quick with it. I'm trying to build up heat so I can use like Dragon mostly. Because Dragon is just one of the best overall styles which is fully upgraded. Your hits are quick, you can dodge cancel out of pretty much almost anything. And really the only times I use the other styles is rush to kind of maybe build up heat or sometimes hit the enemy to go really fast. And also for some other strat things I'll explain later on. And I use Brawler when I don't really have all that much heat or when I don't want to use Dragon too much because it's too OP. Did you see that? Bro, like Yuya and Kaz Kazuki were just pulling their weight. They were just hitting the enemy at the exact right moment. So that when I, when I was done with my combo, they just hit the enemy to reset them so I could go for another combo. That was such a bang. What is that? That's crazy. So here we have our new boss fight. I believe this is a man who calls you a pussy in the original game, but in Kiwami, I forget if he calls you a pussy or not. I don't know. I was replaying the game. I wasn't really watching the cutscenes again. I already know the story of this game. But yeah, this fight's done already. You know, it's another one of those nothing fights. And also, they decided to include a climax heat action for a fight that just kind of dies immediately. So, you know, whatever. And here we have Shimano, our first major, like, you know, big, uh, actually, like, dangerous enemy, even though he's kind of a non-threat because he's just copying Mr. Shakedown's moveset. Yeah, one of my big issues with Kiwami games is that most of the boss fights copy movesets, so even when you have, like, a standard one-on-one -on -one here, they're kind of soiled by the fact that they're just kind of a copy of an enemy in another game, and the enemy in the other game was probably a better boss fight in general. But yeah, this guy's just shake down except with nerf damage. But to be fair, damage doesn't really matter that much because I'm doing no damage. The point is, I do not want to get hit. And also here, I'm demonstrating just how ineffective the Kamaki parry is. If you've seen my Yakuza 3 and 4 videos, you know that that move is essential to no damage in those games. Well, in Yakuza 4, not as much. Well, I mean, except for a couple boss fights. But like, the Kamaki parry is one of your most useful tools as Kiryu in three, four, and I'd even go as far to say five. And here, it is so ineffective against boss fights. You parry them, they literally like stand still for like a second or two, and then they immediately go back to whatever they were doing. They're not stunned. When you hit them, they don't react. They're just like in this weird like animation where they just don't do anything. I mean, you can hit them while they're not doing that, but it's a very short amount of time, and then they recover immediately after and can counterattack soon after. So anyways, here's another group fight, and these guys threw a rocket dog that is not very nice. However, yeah, here's a little major flaw I think Kiwami 1 has it that most of its fights are really just unnotable. They mostly just, uh, they're just like some punk or whatever, and he has a group, and you just beat him up, and it's like, okay. So, you know, they're like mildly frustrating, they're forgettable, and I just, I'm just not big on them. However, uh, the big thing with Kiwami 1 is that its fights may, most of its fights aren't really all that notable, but its main combat system is fantastic. This game is so much fun to play when you're fully upgraded and have all your tools. And here we go. Here we have Hayashi, who is a pretty cool fight. I'll get into him. However, he is just kind of a worse version of Baba from Yakuza 5, except he has a little group around him. So, you know, a little bit more to manage than just the worst version of Baba. <laughs> So here I'm just kind of switching up the styles just because I don't want to rely on Dragon all the time, but I'm just going to switch the Dragon over for this like last couple of times, and here I get very lucky with that double tap. So the main thing with Hayashi here is that, well, he is a copy of Al, but he has a few extra moves of his own, which I think are unique, and it's like that hand poke which just slides across the entire room. Like, yeah, Hayashi is just dangerous to have in a car. Look at that. Whoosh. You might be hitting an enemy like on the one side of that, then he'll just come in, slide in, poke you ruin that no damage so you definitely want to get rid of all those people so you can take him one-on-one -on -one because he is a little dangerous little man he's not little but you know he's dangerous so the main thing is uh i should probably get into the rush the rush tech tech and all that so pretty much the your main tool to dealing with most boss fights is you want to parry a certain move 
And by a certain move, ideally you want. Oh, but look at that parry! Wasn't that crazy? Like I parried him, he was all the way on the stairs and just dragged him all the way to this little pond where I am. And now that I mean, the parry is wonderful, but. So yeah, anyways, uh, rush is parry. So the main thing you want to do is you want to parry an enemy's attack, and you want to parry their the end of their combo. Now, uh, something which uh, I, something from the Act of the Zero actually does apply here, where if you parry an enemy's attack while they're in the middle of their combo, they're likely not going to stagger when you try to do like the staggering thing later on. They'll mostly like turn around and try to attack you, or go into invincibility mode, and we don't want either of those two things. You, for the most part, you want to parry the end of their combo because there they'll be more susceptible to being parried and like kind of staggered. The unlike in Yakuza Zero, where you dodge cancel for like in nearly infinite combos, here you can't do that as much because you can't dodge cancel as fast. When you dodge cancel, there's like a little weird wavy thing you do, and then you can't just immediately go into the combo. So pretty much uh, the way the strategy has been adapted for Kiwami 1 is that instead of doing a full combo, you parry the enemy, then you do this, you do a few little taps, like, you know, one, two, three, and then dodge, one, dodge, one, dodge, one, and while you're doing this, you're setting the, you're positioning the enemy. You want to you want to position the enemy until you can switch to another style to deal a full combo. Most of the time that style is going to be Dragon, but you can also switch to Brawler. And sometimes you can switch to Beast when you want to go for a grab or maybe like a grab heat action. That definitely has its uses, but for the most part I'm going to be using Dragon and Brawlers. So yeah, you just kind of parry and you tap, 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 until they're in position for you to deal a full Dragon combo. Like that, look, tap. Oh, well, but, well at that point when I parried him, he decided to do an attack of zone, but I just kept hitting him and yeah, just... Right now I'm only using Rush and I kind of screwed that up, so whatever, I'll, I do do it correctly uh, later. So here is Gary Buster Holmes, and he is copying the final boss of Yakuza 5, but not without, but you know, a nerfed version of it without all his trinkets and all that. But I apply some of the same strats I did with that guy, where I pretty much just parry his third strike, because it's the easiest one to do. And here we're fighting uh, some homeless people, a pretty easy fight overall. But they do have swords, so they have a bit of wide swings, but not all that hard. However, I believe here I'm going to demonstrate that when you have to deal with so many crowds, it's a great thing to have that beast ha action, heat action. This one, this is definitely one of the most useful skills in the game. It was insanely useful in Yakuza 0 as well, but here, since you're dealing with crowds on a more regular basis, it's a great thing to have. And now here I'm trying to find a cool way to take out this last guy. And you know, at first I went for a little, you know, little drop kick because you do a little flip like in Yakuza 5, which is sick. But instead I re resulted the sword and just hit him in one hit. And he was like, wow, I mean, okay. But to be fair, uh, your damage with a sword when you're in dragon mode is like insanely high. You'll see in a later fight. And here is our first actual Goro Majima fight besides all the ones you do for Majima everywhere. You know, that's a whole different topic. Maybe a video on it. <laughs> Maybe y'all can watch that. But yeah, anyways, uh, this fight can be quite troublesome because, well, not only are you dealing with Majima, you're also dealing with a group. And while you're trying to take out the group, Majima will be swinging all over the room trying to get you. He is dangerous. You always want to be on the lookout for him. And these enemies are no slouches either. They can come out really fast with their attacks. And well, to be fair, I think uh, most Kiwami enemies tend to come out really fast with their attacks. And they also have this habit of, go of running across the room to get you. And to be fair, this isn't a bad thing. Because when they run across the room, they actually, they're actually they actually more predictable to like counterattack and all that. I really like this design of uh, Kiwami 1 compared to well, some of the future games like Kiwami 2 where it seems like enemies are only inclined to attack you when you're extremely close to them and given that uh, Yakuza enemies attack extremely fast if you're close to them you're just more bound to get clipped and actually actually like prepare to like counter attack anything they do but here enemies attack from across the room giving you ample time to react to what they're about to do for the most part I think this applies for most parts of this game's design, except for guns. <laughs> we'll get to guns later, but yeah, anyways. So yeah, anyways, here I'm setting up Majima again with my uh, parry stagger thing, except I kind of screw it up. I get a little bit too... <laughs> a little bit too excited with Rush. But we're going to fix that real quick and go into Dragon Combo. Or not! <laughs> 
All oh, right, this is the part where I show off just how broken the climax heat actions are. So yeah, that just took him all the way down. And that climax heat action broke Majima so hard that when he switches to his bat style, he goes back to doing a knife combo. But then he's like, oh, okay, that's wrong. But one thing he does not switch is his aura. He has his knife aura on him, but he's using his bat, which I think looks really dope. But I, he has lost it. Then oh, see. Look at that, I parried while he was in the middle of a combo, and because I did that, he just went back to hitting. But to be fair, Majima's bad style is just inclined to not give a crap about what you're doing, so he's quite dangerous, you do not want to mess with the bat. But then again, well, yeah, but once he went to that combo, I parried the end of his strike, and I was actually able to stagger him and do the full combo. Very nice. So here is a fight that's very uh, meaningless, you know, like, eh, whatever, he's just a random mook, so I just kind of destroy him. Now, I do end up doing the Brawler full combo a lot of the time, but to be fair, that's not really what you want to be doing because Brawler's uh, like combos tend to have a habit of like your fourth hit like missing, and if it misses, you can get screwed. But to be fair, with these like mooks who don't really have much health or, da or danger to them, that doesn't really matter, but you know, it's a thing to keep in mind if you want to try this out on your own. That's not really the most efficient way to go about it. Because the most efficient way to go about it would be a cool little combo switching, the cool little like combat stance switching thing, which I do way later in this video. Oh wait, 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 wait check this out though. So here I'm trying to use like my O kick to kick the tails of them, but then I just parry the guy out of nowhere. I wish I could say that was planned, but I had zero plan. I was just trying to kick these like seats at them, but that dude just came into my peripheral, tried to beat me up, and I was like, nah, son, parry, get bent. Yeah, one useful thing in Kiwami 1 is that we don't have the speedy gear system in this game like in Zero. In Zero, there was a gear system of three gears. You know, first gear you were slow, second gear you were a little faster, and third gear you were very fast. So in Kiwami 1, we've gotten rid of that for a more traditional heat bar system, and that means that each of uh, the speed of the styles have kind of been unified all across the board except for Dragon, who when it's not in heat mode it's a bit slow but when it's in heat mode it's really fast but the rest of the styles have been all been unified and are just kind of fast all the time which is very nice i like that change quite a bit but i do really like the gear system because well in zero it felt balanced except for the dragon style who in first and second gear was kind of useless oh yeah i forgot to mention this but uh b king uh, that previous fight uh, his fighting style is actually just shinadas from five but converted to a boss fight and that actually is not the first time you get to fight Shinada as a boss fight because in the Yakuza 5 Climax battles, you get to fight Shinada as a boss fight. You know, neat little thing, but they pretty much just copied it from Yakuza 5. So yeah, here uh, I, di I dispose of the main boss fight immediately just by spam, just by abusing just how OP like Dragon's like damage output is because I do not want to deal with him. He has this, he has this knife move set that's just extremely fast and annoying, and just not fun all around, and he is just bad in a crowd. I'm not gonna suffer him. But, oh yeah, but Kiwami 1 has a lot of neat things when you're fully upgraded. So pretty much, uh, if you grab an enemy in the, in the beginning of a fight, your heat goes way up. And most of the time, that means you can do a little heat action, like with Beast, or, you know, what, what's, uh, what say you. Also, the first time you dodge something and you haven't taken damage, you also get a ton of heat. This is extremely useful, and I do end up using it in a lot of future fights, because what I end up doing is, I'll start fighting the dudes by normally, I'll use my heat for a lot of useful stuff, and when I run out, I dodge an attack, get all my heat back, that lovely feedback loop, that stuff is dope. So anyway, here are the porn thugs. This dude wanna get a lady and put her in porn, and she does not wanna be in porn. We're not gonna let that happen. So yeah, anyways, dispose of the main guy, because the main guy also has a knife, and honestly, I forget if his knife moveset was all that much, but it's a knife. They tend to have really fast, unfair attacks to deal with, as most people with knives do, so I'm just not going to put up with it. We get, we get that ass banned. Oh, I also do end up doing this thing with Brawler where I like hit the enemy and then I go for the final hit even though the other hit already like hit him. And I think it's a weird thing because like when you press like the square button a certain amount of times you actually stay committed to those attacks. Like 
I don't know, something which I could notice in like some previous Yakuza games and also some future ones is I could kind of hit square like a bunch of times and then like press triangle to kind of stop what I was doing. But here, if you press it four times and try to press triangle when you like at the third hit, you're going to go to the fourth hit. So, you know, you got to be a little bit more deliberate with your button press. So here we're fighting Shota. And this name just is bad luck for most media involved, but I get rid of him pretty easily. He's actually using a, one, a moveset from one of the final boss fights from 5. And that final boss fight in 5 is like one of the most dangerous fights in that game. But here he's kind of a non-threat just because he has such little health and also not as many thugs. However, this is a really tight room, so you know it could be a dangerous situation, but I defuse it extremely quickly. And also we have Dante to help me. Oh, check out this beast maneuver though. I go for the full combo and then pop. Bam! Awesome. I love that. And oh, here we have a massive spike in difficulty. What is this? So pretty much we go from just a bunch of like regular nondescript group fights, you know, like whatever, whatever, to uh, most of these guys have guns and also their telegraph is insanely annoying. Like, I mean, to be fair, telegraphing guns has always been like a weird issue in Yakuza. There's a uh, Yakuza 2 where the guy would just, you know, shout. But like his gun, like cocking is kind of silent. Here we have the gun cock, but they cock it so fast. Like, oh man, like, dude, like it's literally like, I swear, it's like a second to react. They go, and when it's, you get hit and it's so annoying. In this attempt, I get extremely lucky. I go for that B style action to get rid of most of the group. And then I actually try to combo some people. And thankfully, while I'm comboing that one guy, the other guys do get the bright idea to not shoot me. And I love that. I thank them for that. And now that I've gotten rid of most of the gun guys, it's good for the main boss fight, who thankfully doesn't have that annoying ass telegraph which most of these other goons have. Thankfully, they don't do that telegraph thing, so I can just kind of go about my day and just yada yada. So yeah, once the enemy, once I'm dealing with mostly melee guys, I don't want to deal with combos, so I go for the quick, swift tiger drop. And well, with a fight like as unfair as this, I think tiger drop is more than fair. And yeah, tiger drop, eat action, fight's over. Don't like it, <laughs> get out of here. Oh wait, if you thought that previous fight was bad, here is uh, probably the worst fight in the game. This fight is so ass. This is the worst arena in the game. It's so tight. It's like the way it's like blocked is like structure to block your camera movement and like to block what you want to hit like oh it's such a crappy level like you enter this part I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this guy i don't even know what i'm hitting at that point it's so annoying and you have like the two main boss fights who are extremely aggro well to be fair uh, the bald guy isn't all that aggro but then like his friend has joji fuma's moveset so you're dealing with one of the hardest fights from yakuza 3 in a group in one of the worst arenas in the series like oh this is such garbage all of it i hate it so much However, I found one way and I got lucky with it. So pretty much I got rid of the Joji Fuma guy by kicking him twice and then doing a heat action. If I didn't kick him twice, he wouldn't have died from the heat action. That just would have been complicated because I would have had to stomp him out. And then one of these guys might have been able to clip me. However, once the two main boss fight people are gone, it becomes a much simpler matter. I drag them into the hallway. And in the hallway, my brawler style pretty much hits everything it touches. And that is extremely useful when you're dealing with these people who are crowded in this cramp ass hallway. I just do pop, 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 pop. Easy, simple, very nice. However, if uh, the two boss fight guys were here, well, Joji Fuma has a thing where if you hit his block too much, he reacts and like attacks you, and that just would have been hell to deal with when I'm hitting all these people in this cramped ass hallway. Anyways, here is Koji Shindo. This guy does not become cool until the second game, but still, here is his boss fight. He is copying a moveset from Ishin, and he has a big ass group with him. This group is gonna be a big issue, but the big but the biggest issue is just Shindo himself. Uh, I don't know. I don't like that most uh, after Ishin came out, every other game after, I thought, hey, this guy has a sword. Let's just copy an Ishin moveset onto that. Ishin's dope. It'd be, I mean, this should this should be cool, right? No, because in Ishin, you had your dope-ass movesets. But in every other game after that, your movesets can't deal with the Ishin boss fights. It's so annoying. And they tend to be some of the most frustrating parts of their games. Like uh, Shindo here is just, he just floats across the room. And yeah, oh, well, fun fact. Uh, 
Shindo here is actually copying Nishiki's moveset from Ishin, which in Kiwami 2, he's copying someone else entirely unrelated. Just thought that was funny. But yeah, but anyways, yeah, Shindo here is a big problem when you're dealing with this group because it just floats across the room. He runs towards you and then he goes for his combo. Those are just floaty and just go all across this arena, which is pretty small and packed. And it's a bunch of dudes and he's just running around with his big ass sword. It's a dangerous fight, is what I'm trying to say. And also, I mean, while Shindo here is a big danger, and the size of the group is also quite dangerous, keep in mind that some of these people have knives, and knives attacks come out extremely quickly too, so those guys are a massive danger as well. So here, I'm mostly going for the dragon grab combo, which are very useful in this game. Just pop, 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 grab. I mean, you hit most of the group, you, you most of the time you get rid of the guy you hit. And well, here, if I extended that combo any longer, Shindo would have clipped that would have been annoying to deal with. And also, while you're beating up most of his uh, random goons here, you actually, they actually drop quite a lot of cool weapons, mostly the sword. You want to go for the sword, so, I mean, you know, if you're attempting to fight him, definitely make use of the weapons as dragon, if you got the dragon upgrade, because it's definitely one of your more useful skills. And also, uh, your animations of the sword in this game are copied from Ishin, which I really like. It feels nice because it comes from a game with a really dope combat system. And also, its damage output is insane! Did you see that? His whole health bar just went away, bruh. Come on. And here, I'm gonna try to do the rush thing, but I kinda screw it up so I don't go for that heat action. And, spoiler alert, I don't actually end up doing that heat action because I kinda kill him before I could do it. So yeah, but however, I was complaining a lot about how dealing with Ishin movesets in future games is really annoying, but to be fair, in this game, there's a pretty good workaround around it. You just parry, like with most boss fights in this game. Like to be fair, like Kiwami 1 has a lot of boss fights that put under any other combat system, and by any other combat system, I mean the Dragon Engine. Those fights are awful, but under Kiwami 1's combat system, they're actually quite manageable because, well, you have the parry, which kind of solves most problems for you. So here we have a pretty unnotable fight with the blue gang. It's just, you know, one guy who has a taser. He could be pretty annoying. And two guys to help him. But I got rid of those two guys really quickly. So, you know. Oh, actually, there is one notable thing. He copied Majima there besides that. Not all that notable. On a funny little phenomenon happens where I go for a combo that leaves me exposed to being counterattacked, but I did so much damage to them with that combo that they go into like their little climax heat state, so I'm pretty much safe. I don't know, just something which happens quite a bit in this video and I thought was funny. Now here is the White Edge gang, which is a little bit more of a notable fight just because he has a lot more people. This arena is quite cramped, and also I destroy them. But to be fair, that's the point of this video, I want to destroy fights. So I kind of start off with a little grab heat action to get it, which pretty much allows me to eliminate one guy. And then I grab one guy, which gives me a ton of heat back. Well, I dodge to get a ton of heat so I can switch to beast and do my little action. Ideally, I don't want to hit the boss fight with that heat action. I'd rather just hit all the, all the enemies just so that I can take out three guys and not just two guys. However, that doesn't end up being all that much of an issue because while, well, the, while I was comboing previously there, I kind of hit a guy, then I switched to rush, and then I... I bounded that guy against the wall until he died. That was pretty sick. Anyways, we're just dealing with this guy who's copying Rikia's moveset from Yakuza 3. And Rikia is one of the worst fights in that game. So, well, to be fair, I think he's like copying... Yeah, he's copying Rikia from Yakuza 3. And Rikia is one of the worst fights in that game. But to be fair, he's a little bit more manageable here just because you are so OP. But still, not that great of a fight. Not, not that great of a fight. Not, not a good fight. I'm just going to go, not a good fight. <laughs> Okay, you anyway, know, here's the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, the uh, Akai brothers, yeah, the Akai brothers, and yeah, they are frustrating, let's just say frustrating, and it's for a few reasons, I mean, to be fair, the crowd here, not, I mean, a bit, quite manageable, but the thing is that the Akai brothers here are going to be on your ass while you're taking out the crowd, and the crowd is no slouch either, they have one guy with a taser, that dude attacks extremely fast, he's just like the knife enemies, except that he has a taser. And just frankly, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. But yeah, the Akai brother is just going to be on your ass the whole time. You have uh, the guy copying Majima's dancer style. And to be fair, Majima yeah, has his own little like side quest boss fights where he uses the dancer style himself. But here's the main boss fight using it. So I'm just going to pretty much just qualifies as Majima. So I'll just go with that. And then you have his brother who, 
Honestly, I don't even know what his moveset is. It's just so nondescript besides that one drop kick he does. And to be fair, his like brother, the younger brother, just spends more time just really dodging and then trying to like run up on you and gang up on you with that drop kick when you least expect it. And that's really annoying when you get them both isolated because I want to take out the older guy first because he's always dancing around and he's just kind of annoying to deal with because, well, pretty much, yeah, I found a way to parry him too. But pretty much like what well, the younger brother he does that look at that he was, if, I, like, if i was like a pixel off he would have been he would have hit me he would have clipped me would have been annoying and to be fair you can't really go for the younger brother first either because this guy also gangs up on you really fast the point is both of them have their ways of getting up on you however the thing i want is i want him to just keep dodging like an idiot over there while i beat up his brother instead of you know dodging and then running behind me when the camera's facing away from him while i'm trying to combo his brother i don't want that I just want him to keep dodging. You know, I mean, that, that doesn't affect me. Just keep doing that, and we are A-OK. -okay. Yeah, just keep doing that. Stay in your little corner. I don't want to see you, OK? Bye-bye. So here, uh, I think the game breaks unexpectedly because okay, he goes into Climax Heat, and the thing you do in Climax Heat is you go for a full Rush combo, charge to build up heat so you can do the heat. But then he just gets hit away, bro. I was about to do a heat action on you. What are you doing? This isn't in the... This isn't supposed to happen within the confines of the game. What's wrong with you? Also, that dude almost hit me, but I'm just glad he didn't. <laughs> And now, I don't really uh, know how to like get a good parry combo him, so I'm just trying to like dodge behind him every time he does that drop kick. So we'll just do that. And thankfully, his climax heat action does end up working. He doesn't end up like, you know, flying away like a little bitch. He takes it like a man, but when he takes it like a man, he just gets destroyed immediately. So, you yeah. know. Oh, but that, that was a little, that was scary, because, you know, he blocked, he like broke out of my little combo, and I just had, immediately had to dodge. Okay, so Dragon, like, it's, uh, it's power is just OP all the time, even with its stomps. But anyways, uh, here's a useful little beast thing where I just kind of spam my, the leg grab. This is, becomes very useful in some later fights, and you'll see what happens in those later fights. Boom. So yeah, the Climax Heat actions, like, you know, they deal good damage if you have, a, if you have heat, but then they deal absurd damage if you have a fully maxed out heat bar and this ends up screwing over Lao Kao Long here this dude gets so screwed by my max out climate heat action but let's not worry about it let's think about the good times which are about to happen right now which is parry dopeness so here is that this is definitely one of the best fights in, y in Yakuza Kiwami, and it's kind of strange because it's mostly copying his Yakuza 3 fight, which is one of the more problematic fights in that game, but it's just kind of a case of your tool set in Kiwami 1 is just so nice. So what used to be a pretty problematic and kind of annoying ass fight in like a previous game of like Yakuza 3 in Kiwami 1 is a bit more fun. I guess this is like one of the only times where I think reusing boss movesets kind of, you know, fits. And well, to be fair, it's the same character, so I don't really mind them using the moveset they made for that character in 3. Like that is perfectly fine and also that it just works better in this game. So yeah, I mean in the beginning I have that one move I could like parry with the spear, but when he has these dual swords, they have like a weird like hit hit detection to them, so I'm just not gonna mess around with that. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, you did see that part where he was like spinning his little spear and I apparently got hit. You know, why didn't I take damage from that? Well, I just didn't take damage from that. If you would look at my health bar in that moment, no damage happened. So technically this is still no damage even though I kind of got hit by his little like block spear. Don't know why they made it not, you know, take give you take give you damage. It's kind of weird design. Look at that! An entire health bar just gone. I mean, I, dude, sometimes you're just like in the rush in the moment, doing everything you can. You do the climax heat action. You just end the fight. Like what? What is this? Oh yeah. Anyways, here is a fight which I destroy, and you know it's also one which uh, you know a lot of people are scared. But I'm just gonna go full tiger drop on it. Feel the force. Because, you know, guy has gun, he isn't playing fair, so I'm just gonna tiger drop all his mates. Also, I love this remix, even though I don't think it beats uh, the Yakuza 3 remix of his theme, which is just epic. This is like the more techno-y yada yada theme, but it's, it's dope, I love it. And his original theme is a banger too. But yeah, I just pretty much end up tiger dropping most of his mates. However, I never actually tiger dropped- oh, LOOK AT THAT! LOOK AT THAT! Yo, I did the heat action, I immediately dodged into the bullet, this is so sick! I love this! 
But yeah, anyways, here I utilized the beast to kind of like leg bram spam quite a bit just to kind of bring his health bar down. And I end up bringing his health bar down to the point where he does his climax heat action, and I just immediately destroy him with a climax heat action, just kind of completely negating his fight. <laughs> like, I mean, damn, damn, shouty, okay. And here we have a pretty unnotable group fight. They all have swords, so they can be a bit dangerous. So, uh, you know, once again, go into Beast. To get re Well, I, mean, I go for the dodge to get heat. Because sometimes when I grab someone, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to red heat. Because this action can only be done when you have red heat. So, you know, go into heat, get rid of most of the group. Then go thin out the other people so I can take on the boss alone. And just kind of go from there. Pretty unnotable. Pretty whatever. You know, it's not a major boss fight. But, you know, this guy kind of has a major boss fight health bar. So it's time to include him. Yada, yada, yada. Same thing. Different day. Kiwami 1's boss fights are mostly unnotable and forgettable. And just no, not, not the best. And also mostly just reskins from better fights. But, hey, whatever. Aside from a couple great exceptions. Like take for example, Lao Kao Long and Arase, the previous two fights I think are much better in this game just simply because, well, in Yakuza 1, well, Lao Kao Long, there wasn't really anything wrong with Well, to be fair, in order to fully analyze like the original game's boss fights, I would have to go ahead and no damage those game's boss fights, which I plan to do in the future. I don't know, like the reason I decided to, this uh, Kiwami 1 no damage video was able to come out so fast, like usually these things take like, what, two weeks? Like, I mean, a month, you know, usually they don't come out this fast. But the reason I think Kiwami won so fast is because, well, I've already 100%ed this game. So pretty much it was just a case of me opening up a new game plus hard save file and just going through it. And Kiwami won is not that long of a game. To be fair, most Yakuza games are not that long aside from, I don't know, some of the recent ones. Like Yakuza 1, not that long. Yakuza 2, definitely beefier, but still not that long. Yakuza 3, kind of short. Yakuza 4, uh, short. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, with a couple padding here to make it a little longer, but yeah, Yakuza 4 is short. Yakuza 5, I think, is, is definitely, like, the longest game in the series, so yeah, that's that's not short, that's pretty beefy. Yakuza 0 could be a bit short, but it's kind of in the middle of being short and beefy. But yeah, anyways, yeah, I was able to just do this one really fast, just, well, not that fast, because there were a couple, well, those spikes in difficulty kept me up for quite a lot of hours, and some of those spikes in difficulty are actually coming up, like... Uh, the Mysterious Organization fight was a massive spike in difficulty that kept me up, but the rest of them, eh, not so much. But yeah, so I was able to do this one really fast. Now, what was I saying before I went on about the stuff about it being really fast? Well, yeah, the fight, so pretty much, yeah, I would have to replay the original game, but to be fair, I'm not exactly excited to just immediately go back to the original game, because the original game doesn't have New Game Plus. And to my knowledge, the Japanese HD collection of the first game also doesn't have New Game Plus. So pretty much, a no damage run of that game would have to have a bit of routing, where I would pretty much try to get as many upgrades as possible for each fight. Because, like, to get a lot of really useful moves, you have to do the Kamaki training. So pretty much, uh, if possible, I would love to do all the Kamaki training once it's immediately available. But in order to do that, I do know that some of the Kamaki training is locked behind certain items and certain, like, level like level up things you have to do so you know it's just uh, there's like a bit of annoying routing which i'm just not excited to just go in and do it won't really take all that long just because the original game just isn't that long and kiwami one despite adding a ton of padding also isn't all that long well aside from all the side quest grinding and the majima everywhere and all that so you know majima ever tends to drag i made a video about that maybe you should watch that called the kiwami rant <laughs> yada 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 but yeah, I would love to do the original game in the near future, but I'm just not exactly jumping for joy to do it right now. So anyways, this dock fight, this fight is garbage. <laughs> it's not, there's not a thing really all that good or bad about it, but it's just, it's just so annoying. Like, like the, I mean, I've, heard, I've talked about this before, how this fight just kind of ruins the tone of the game. It's just like, oh, hey, funny Majima. Also, here's just a random group fight where you fight with him. Like, okay. And then there's that whole ending where Kiryu abandons Majima for zero reason just because they had to come up with a brand new reason why Majima shows up in bandages in your second fight at, like, the weird place where you have sex with people at the Soaplands. They needed a brand new reason why he's bandaged up and why it's a surprise to see him because in Kiwami, because in Kiwami 1, they added this whole new side quest thing where you're always fighting him in the fights drag on over and over and over yeah i made a video on them 
<laughs> so yeah, anyways, uh, and besides that, this fight just kind of sucks. It's a group fight, and it's like, okay, you beat up the group. Then you got this boss fight who's copying uh, Kanai, Kanai from Yakuza 5, except he has a gun. And he doesn't ever use the gun. He only uses it when he's getting up sometimes, and he ends up shooting someone. As you can see here, sometimes when I'm beating this guy up and Majima beats him up, he just turns around and blasts Majima full on in the stomach. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, you know, oh, wow, he's down on the ground, and he just gets up... Like, yeah, it's pretty funny, but yeah, besides that, uh, this guy's not that fun to fight. With, like, Kiwami 1's, like, fighting style. He was troublesome in 5 too, but here, you parry his attack, and he tends to turn around most of the time, even if it's, like, the final thing in his attack. Like, I mean, you know, like, it happens in, like, the, my da no damage here, where, like, I'm hitting him from the back, you know, pop. Pop, pop. But the thing is, usually by the second or third pop, he's already turning around, even though I'm keeping the same rhythm I do with every other fight in the game. But most every uh, every time I do the parry thing, I'm keeping the same rhythm I do with every other fight in the game. But for this guy, he just thinks he's so cool and, and just, oh, <laughs> oh my god, Majin, which got. But yeah, this guy thinks he's so cool, so he just turns around and ruins my whole strat. So he's not fun to fight in that way. And it's really hard to combo because he usually just turns around no matter what you do. I try to hit him with dragons, you know, whatever. So anyway, here is the third Majima fight, and this time he switches between his knife phase and his hand-to-hand -hand style, which I mentioned in the video is that you fight uh, way more interesting versions of Majima than this, so you know, it's just kind of weird fighting him here. However, this is still definitely one of the best fights in the game. Very dope, and I end up do showing some of the cool combo stuff. Actually, no, the cool combo stuff comes later, but I'm getting some pretty good parries and full combos here with Brawler and later Dragon. And here I don't do the little QT things I'm saving it for later. And here is his QT thing, which is very fast. And one of his, in one of his future fights, I tried to avoid it just because it was so fast. <laughs> So yeah, with Majima, he has his full combo, and then he has a couple moves that are just good to parry because they put him into a vulnerable state immediately. Which is, well, not exactly vulnerable, you need to put in the work. If you don't put in the work, he'll just get the drop on you, but you know, yada yada. So yeah, Majima here compared to the original game, I don't know, I'd have to play the original Yakuza 1 to compare his fights, but pretty much here, he's just copying his moveset from Yakuza 0, the one you actually play with, and the thing with, like, you know, fighting characters who have movesets designed for you to, like, play around with is that they tend to be a bit unfair, and, well, I mean, if you didn't have this great parry tech, yeah, Majima would be unfair, which is why his fight is, like, complete ass in Kiwami 2, just because that game doesn't have the same tools this game has to deal with him. And anyways, I also, I mean, I break this fight with this, like, climax heat action, like, you know, oh, just did one combo, and now I'm just gonna end the fight with this heat action. Check this out. And now here is the return of the Shimano family. It was one of the first notable group fights. In the beginning of the game, and now it's uh, what it's one of the hardest group fights in this game. Man, this is a packed boat. But I do quite like this fight compared to well some other fights which I think are garbage. Like that mysterious organization fight is ass. But this fight I think is dope. It's mostly just a bunch of people on a boat, one gun guy which has a the very like exact position you can like predict and all that. And here, like, my main strat is take out the guy throwing grenades because I know that guy's going to be troublesome later on. And then go for the guy with the gun so I can get his gun and then go to the front of the boat, shoot everyone. Because most of the time, you get everyone in your clip. And the thing about this gun is that you shoot them, they'll do, like, little staggering animation on the floor. And they'll slowly die off. Even if, like, their entire health doesn't go away, it'll just, like, clip away like poison. It clears out most of the enemies. And then, now you have one more major thing you want to deal with. That guy with, like, the weird buzzsaw thing. This guy is a new since they'll be trying to take out an enemy he'll just run up and you just like clip you and do even worse than just clip you he's a bit troublesome to tiger drop it's just they're really like you want to deal with him using heat actions just because he's dangerous you don't want to mess with him so yeah this fight is definitely one of the more uh, challenging and vigorous in this game because you have a ton of people on a boat, you have a couple dangerous players, the guy with grenades, but well, to be fair, the guy isn't all that dangerous, he tends to stay in one spot, but to be fair, with my little thing where I'm kind of training, uh, training around the boat, running around, that guy is going to be troublesome, so I had to get rid of him quickly. And oh yeah, another fun thing is that usually, 
I would like do the heat action on them because once I do the heat action I can immediately run over to the gun guy and I still have heat so I do a fast combo on him and then once I do the fast combo I wait for him to you know pretty much be dead I pick up his gun and I start running thing is running with the gun isn't always easy because most of the times enemies will just start to clip you and if you get really unlucky that guy with the bus will just be in a really unfortunate position where you get screwed but yeah, the gun strategy isn't the best, but it's one I wanted to do just because it clears out a ton of people really quickly. And also, it's just dope to just shoot. <laughs> no, more like boom, boom, boom! But yeah, it's fun. Oh yeah, but a weird thing about the grab combos in this game is that they're not 100% safe. There's been many times where I went for like that full dragon like grab combo where you grab a singular enemy and just like chuck them on the ground. Uh, sometimes the enemies around me will just immediately clip me when I'm done with that. Most of the time for safety purposes when you're in a crowd you want to go for the square 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 triangle grab combo not the square 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 triangle combo. Like like the, the full combo grab combo you only want to do you most of the time you only want to do when you're like fighting a 1v1 boss fight. The, for groups you want to go for the square 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 triangle grab combo. And now here we have the Shimano second fight, and uh, he has a sword for his first phase, and then he switches over to his normal uh, Mr. Shakedown moveset for his second phase. But yeah, weird thing about his sword phase is that he's copying the moveset which Saijima has when he uses the sword in Yakuza 4, which is a weird thing to copy, but hey, you know, whatever. We'll go with it. Also, uh, I actually installed a mod in this game. I installed the licensed music mod, which pretty much means you get the Japanese opening. And you get Receive You Reborn playing through this fight, and it makes it am amazing. Oh, man, we got robbed in the West, man. This fight is, I don't know, this fight, like, quickly became one of my favorites in the series just purely for, like, the music. And also just, like, I mean, yeah, he is just copying Shakedown, but, like, this is one of the most massive crowds you fight in a Yakuza game plus a boss fight. I think it's just dope. And now just, the music just makes it so much better, like... In the West, we got just like his normal like remix theme of Pray Me. That is so lame. This is a climactic moment, and this song makes it that climax that we wanted. Like, ah, oh, this just this gives me like Yakuza 5, like the, his massive like group fight in that game, like kind of flashbacks just from like how epic in scale it is. Like all the enemies take down their bodies, like littering the floor as you're going around. Ah, oh, it's so dope. And also, I am mostly relying on Tiger Drops. I'm relying on a pretty cheap strat where pretty much tiger drop the enemies then do a heat action whenever i can i just need to eliminate these guys because there is a ton of guys and it's just great how you have like this whole group with you two fighting while you're doing it and this song is just awesome like man it, it just sucks that yakuza 0 at the end like hinted at receive you being in like kiwami 1 you know they play it at the end and all that and then like in kiwami 1 we don't get that theme like that's kind of whack but at the very least in the japanese release we get this dope ass remix during a boss fight so dope i love this like to death Oh yeah, I don't think I ever mentioned how uh, the Lao Kao Long, how the Arase bat battle is better in Kiwami 1. Well, just purely because you used to have a lot more tools. You have Rush, which means you can deal with that dude's crazy dodges. And the Tiger Drop can now Tiger Drop gunshots, which already makes that fight a lot more viable. And also your dodging capabilities are a lot better in Kiwami 1, which means the bullet stuff isn't as annoying. So yeah, pretty much my main strat is just Tiger Drop and Heat Action his entire crowd and then go for Shimano. Now what you'll notice is that I didn't really try to do that much damage to him because if I do too much damage he loses his sword. And yo, look at my homie, this dude survived throughout the entire fight and he's the guy who broke Shimano's sword. He's such a homie and he also lets keeps him kind of here doing his little grab animation so I can do a full combo on him. Yo, rest in peace my guy, much love. And now we're gonna go back to my uh, previous strat of just spamming the Komaki parry because he has Shakedown's moveset and that moveset is really predictable. But still, what an epic fight. Love this song, love this fight, love this arena, love how there's a bunch of bodies littering the floor, your fallen allies, the fallen foes littering, the legends, the tiger, the dragon, yeah!
And yeah, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but I also think this fight is a big improvement from the original games. Just because, like, the music, your tools, just... Mm. And well, to be fair, the original game's Premi was a lot better than this game's. This game's, like, Premi Remix isn't bad, but just, like, the rapping in the original just makes it so much grungier. I love it. Anyways, here's the Majima fight you get once you complete all of his Majima Everywhere stuff. And it's pretty epic. They actually play his original, like, Receive You Remix theme, which... Yeah, I don't really like like his remix theme in this game, but like his original theme is banging. Oh yeah, here I start to do some of the cool combo stuff. So pretty much what you can do is that, you know, once you parry someone with rush, you know, tap, 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 set them up for a full combo with dragon. Once I do that full combo with dragon, I can like quick step attack, pop, switch to another style, go for another full combo. And if you start to get really advanced with it, there's like a, like, I don't know, I think like, like a brawler, dragon, and rush each have like their own little like combo stop, which allows you to switch to another style and just keep comboing the enemy. They all have like their own way to do it. Like here, brawler, poop pop, oh, switch to dragon, and you know, if you get really good with it, you can go dragon, quick step, switch to brawler, you can keep doing that just over and over and over. And I start to do like, I mean, I don't get too complex with it. I, I kind of mostly keep to this and what I do to Nishiki later on, but like it's just really fun stuff to do. Uh, I mean, one thing, uh, one thing which, I don't know, uh, no damaging Kiwami one kind of puts me at a disadvantage when it comes to make, doing cool stuff because unlike some of the other games I've played, uh, people have actually no damaged this game quite a bit. I've got to come back to my boy Dante Devil 12 who is a master of this game and just frankly, I don't think I'm going to match his strats. I mean, dude is on another level. All that like uh, style switching stuff I got talking about, he destroys Nishiki in his video. He like switches between like his styles like four times. Like it's insane, dude. I love that video so much. And also I uh, I noticed this new guy. I mean not all that new, but like, I noticed this no damager recently. Uh, uh, I think uh, his name is like Pius Lee or whatever. That dude is like even more insane. That dude like infinites people with like the dragon style. It's insane. And also if you noticed in that Majima fight, I completely ended him with a climax heat action. So you know. There's that. <laughs> I mean, like I said, the climax heat insanely overpowered. Anyways, here's Jingu. This is a garbage ass fight. And I'm gonna let you know ahead of time that I definitely used equipment in this fight. Uh, I'm using the bloody bandages, the payback ring, and that blue amulet thing, which makes enemies like attack you less. Just because I'm just not dealing with that, this guy's crap. Like, first off, his main boss fight sucks ass and is just really annoying. And second, every time you die from him, you have to do this whole ass section where you fight a bunch of gun goons, and that's just annoying to deal with every time. But you know, if I didn't show this part, I couldn't show off this cool cinematic stuff that happens here, and like the full progression of his theme wouldn't be apparent. But yeah, it just kind of blows ass. However, I do actually manage to no damage this little section here just by, you know, playing smart, using guns, and also I have items on, and also Dragon is just super strong. I don't know, like, I mean, I'm definitely doing a less safe strat with this, like, section. Like, I'm just kind of going full aggro here. In the beginning, I mostly just, like, OP them with, like, my Dragon combos. And then once I reach this section, I just kind of use the gun to take everyone out. And you want to do it from a distance, and you also want to make sure that they don't shoot you before you shoot them because sometimes you'll shoot them and you'll like exchange shots and that just kind of clips you and is very annoying. I do love Jingu's theme here. Like in the original game, he just kind of got like a basic bitch theme and you know it kind of made the fight like kind of whatever. But here he's got the evil theme, the wicked. And here I'm lowering my health to make that payback ring damage really take into effect because I hate this guy. Also check it out, I got the golden gun because I have 100% of this game. I'm not gonna use it though. So, you know, that I am using those items. We're gonna, we're gonna destroy these guys. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna break them. We're gonna break their backs. We're gonna break their times. We're gonna break them. This fight is very limiting. Uh, Jingu has that pain in the ass, bitch ass moveset. You've seen it in my Kiwami 2 video. The gun people in that, like the final gun boss fight in that uses the moveset where like if you get close to him he does an ephemerate kick and pretty much he just shoots you it's just very annoying these guys have like the gun moveset that's just extremely quickly and also uh majima saga's final boss uses the moveset which these guys have which to be fair they will be copying these guys and to be fair it's more annoying to deal with in kiwami too because he's just more limited especially as majima in that game I, you know i made a video on it and also no damage to that game you know 
But yeah, so anyways, uh, because I have the payback ring, my damage is just big booty damage, and I just immediately dispose them with only heat actions. And now, I'm dealing with Jingu, who, if you noticed, I did a pretty sick-ass thing where I pretty much, like, did a combo, and then, like, Jingu broke out of it, but I immediately dodged when he counterattacked, so I got... Full heat back. That momentum came back to me. When I got full heat back, I heat damaged him. I know I heat attacked him. And when I heat attacked him, I switched the beast. Did the beast grab thing to bring his health all the way to zero. What this means that it guarantees that once we enter the next phase, he's gonna be uh, doing his little climax heat thing instead of actually shooting his gun. And I don't want him shooting his gun. To be fair, I think he might do that regardless of what you do. I'm, I'm not too sure. See, he's not doing anything. He's doing his little blue thing. He's being like really dummy, stupid over there. And I'm just glad he's doing that. Just keep doing that, Jingu. I want nothing from you. Goodbye. Watch girls as well, religiously. Baba Bowie. I have something very sad to say, and something I, I regret heavily, and it's that, uh, I am using equipment during this fight with Nishiki and I just want to say it's not my fault I was fighting Jingu with equipment and I killed him with that equipment on and what that means is that for the next fight I am still wearing that equipment and in my first attempt when I was recording this game usually the way I would record this game I recorded with OBS and when you record it with OBS pretty much like what I do is I would command tab like out of a uh, out of the game when I was done with a fight and then I would stop press stop recording I don't have any uh, I don't have any quick keys assigned just cuz I don't know I just didn't feel like it I usually just like command tab out of games however when you do that with your Yakuza Kiwami when you re-enter the game it's in windowed mode and I don't like doing that to be fair when it's in windowed mode it doesn't change how the game is recorded but you know I didn't want to play like that so like every time I like you know restart the game you know I pretty much did it for Nishiki like I win the Jingu fight and then I, you know, command tab, stop recording, and then I start recording again, enter the game again, it's in window mode. However, I can't enter the menu until Nishiki's fight starts, so, so you know, Nishiki's fight starts, I enter the menu, I switch the game to full screen again, and then, while I'm in the menu, I remove my equipment. So, you know, in that first attempt, I did remove my equipment. However, you know, I wasn't going to let that attempt slide, because it was kind of, like, not sexy to enter, you know, the settings and make it, like, you know, uh, full screen again. So... I died to do it on my second attempt, except if, as you saw it here, during my second attempt, I never entered the menu. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have the equipment on, but to be fair, I don't think it's that bad because uh, I have full health, so the payback room is doing nothing. Uh, the blue charm thing really doesn't do much. I think I mean, Nishiki is still being extremely aggro. However, the one thing that worries me is the bloody bindings. I'm not sure what the bloody bindings do in Kiwami 1. I don't think they increase attack, but maybe they do. I really hope they don't, because I really want this to be like a fair, cool fight against Nishiki. This fight is dope, aside from, you know, the reused QTEs from uh, the final boss of Yakuza 5 and the final Kusei fight in Zero. That was really lame and cool. It kind of sours what is an amazing fight rig overall. Like, it's just like Nishiki's moveset plus Joji Fuma's moveset from Yakuza 3 to make a really compelling, like, a somewhat tough, cool-ass boss fight. And as you can see throughout this video, I have been styling on him. I've been doing, like, the style switching stuff. And I ended here with a quick, you know, full combo and then quick step change. Pa! Amazing. So yeah, this QT is copied from the Kuze fight with a little extra unique thing thrown at the end with all these cool flashbacks, and it also just completely ends him. So yeah, you know, I would have loved to drag the Nishiki fight a little out, but you know, heat of the moment, I used the climax heat action, you know, so 
uh, whatever. So anyways, here's the Joe Amon fight, who sadly is a bit disappointing in this game because he's just a copy of, uh, uh, like, he's pretty much like, he's just a copy of Majima's Joe Amon fight from Yakuza 0. I mean, so it's like, okay. Except this time you're fighting him with, like, you know, uh, Kiryu's Kiwami moveset, so, you know, it's like, there's something unique definitely happening here. And he's definitely more fun to fight as Kiryu than as Majima, but still. Mm. Yeah, he's a bit lame, a little bit lazy, a bit boring, I'm gonna be honest. But still, a tough, uh, tough Joe Mon fight. But to be fair, this attempt here is tough just because he keeps turning around when I do the parry. Stop doing that! Stop! <laughs> Let me combo you, please! Like, uh, most of this length comes from the fact that every time I parry, he just turns around. And when he turns around, I hit him when he's blocking. And when you hit him when he's blocking, he throws his grenades out at you, dude. Come on. Oh yeah, by the way, this is not a new attempt. This is an upload I did uh, a couple months ago. Just thought I'd let y'all know. Just because I just am not redoing this guy. Purely because the second phase is, is just terrible. Not fun. But yeah, while replaying Yakuza Kiwami, I mentioned it before, I'm just gonna, I mean, say it, most of the fights kinda suck. <laughs> like, they're mostly just group fights, they're mostly kinda boring, you know, the, the, like the people you're fighting don't matter much. They're just kinda like, oh, here's a guy with some moves that you don't care about, but just with a couple goons around them, and it's just like, um, okay. So yeah, most of the fights just kind of tend to blend into each other, aside from a couple notable exceptions. And I was just kind of thinking about this because, you know, I was thinking about Yakuza 4 and how, you know, what, I mean, when I replayed that game, I was kind of like, man, this game's kind of lacking boss fights, right? But, you know, returning to this game, I, I, like, I like look back on Yakuza 4 like, hey, mostly every fight in that game was, like, dope, notable, and there was a lot to say about each one. And, you know, me too fast, a lot of factors, you know, Yakuza 4 has four multiple characters, each with their own fighting style, which has their own tech and all that, yada, 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 yada. But, and... But yeah, still, I was just thinking about, I mean, Yakuza 4, you had, like, a bunch of, like, unique fights that were all, like, mostly cool, aside from a couple garbage exceptions and all that. And, well, I mean, I mean, to be fair, comparing Kiwami 1 to Yakuza 4 is a bit weird, so I guess let's make it a bit more topical. Yakuza 0, to be fair, like, comparing Yakuza 0's, like, boss fight selection to, like, Kiwami 1's boss, boss fight selection, it's like, it's, like, night and day. Like, 0 is a game designed with, like, modern sensibilities and all that. So most of the fights are cool 1v1s. And it's just like a good good chunk of like dope ass 1v1 fights while Kiwami 1 has a couple cool 1v1 fights and mostly just a bunch of garbage group fights. I mean they're not all garbage, there's definitely a good selection and that, sh and that second Shimano fight honestly is so good with the original music! What? Uh, it just pains me every day when cool ass licensed music gets removed because I don't know Japan copyright laws are ass or whatever. I, I, like what is it? What is it with their copyright laws? It's such a pain in the ass. Oh man, I hate this so much. A similar thing is happening with Yakuza 5, where one of the fights has this cool ass triumphant ass music, and it kind of gets replaced with a pretty cool like guitar song thing, but still doesn't have nearly the same effect. But, I mean, if I ever get to know the damage Yakuza 5, I'm probably just going to play the Japanese copy for that one boss fight in particular, just because that song fits so perfectly. Even though, if I include that song, it's probably going to get my video copyright claimed. So, I mean, but I don't really care. So, yeah. I haven't really been talking much about this Joe Amon fight, but it's pretty limiting. Kind of same thing as Majima. You don't really have that many openings, but, well, as Kiryu, you have a couple more openings than Majima. Like, I mean, pretty much the main thing is you want to, like, uh, parry the end of his combo string, which is, like, that big combo he does. Though you do have the ability to parry some of his other smaller combos, which already gives you more of an, uh, more stuff to do than Majima did. But still, it's mostly a waiting game with his Joe Mon. And well, also, you do have Kiryu's OPS Tiger Drop in the beginning. So, yeah. And also, I mean, Joe Mon was just kind of being a pain in the ass by just turning all the time. Like, dog, just let me hit you, please. So yeah, that was the first phase, but now we're entering the second phase and things are going to become a lot more tedious. Uh, I hope you aren't expecting anything too grand, it's mostly just going to be me running around with Rush gaining heat, and then me switching to Beast, going Beast mode, and then going back to Dragon to do like a mega damage Tiger Drop. Oh yeah, here's a mechanic I haven't used for any other fights, but only did for Amon. Mostly because I don't really know what to do with this mechanic, so pretty much once you reach like full like red heat, you can... Uh, I forgot if it was like tapping both of the like you know joystick buttons or tapping uh, L2 and R2, 
and R2 together. I, I forgot what it was exactly, but once you do that, when you have like full heat, you can do that with like every style, and pretty much each style has like a different effect. To do it with Beast, your damage output increases like tenfold. You do it with Rush, and your speed increases tenfold. You do it with Brawler, I don't know what increases. And if you do it with Dragon, I believe you can do any heat move without any heat. So it's just a really useful skill for some things, but to be fair, I didn't really know how to insert it. However, for this fight, I'm only doing Tiger Drops against the Knife Phase here because it's just impossible to deal with this guy without Tiger Drops. <laughs> and, oh, this guy is just so annoying. Like, I mean, you know, it's just like the Zero fight where he has, like, hyper armor all the time, so he never gets staggered from any attacks, so there's no point in really parrying him and like trying to get them. The Komaki parry I already told you is insanely useless in this game against boss fights. So pretty much what I'm doing is just building up heat to red heat, going into beast mode, uh, you know, going beast mode and then doing the tiger drop. Uh, here's another annoying thing about this fight is that it, it's very hard to tiger drop him unless he's doing like that, like his base combo. So not only am I like trying to bait out an attack like tiger drop, the attack I'm trying to bait out is like that combo string he does. However, a certain point he just does not want to do that combo he just likes running around all the time and i don't know how to prompt him to do that combo i don't even know if there's a way to prompt him to do that combo this guy's just annoying and oh once he reaches pink phase i mean once he reaches his fast phase things get annoying oh yeah i forgot to mention that i don't know once uh joe moan in the first phase reaches like a certain health point he just becomes insanely fast i think there is a way to still keep pairing him but i was like kind of like nah i'm just gonna tiger drop this guy now he's too fast he also has a similar thing here except it's way worse so you see him running around like this, right? Th he is in aggro mode. If you get close to him, he will kill you. And also, uh, he, I mean, I'm doing no damage, but even normally, he will kill you because he deals insane damage when he's in his knife phase. So yeah, pretty much he's just running around to, waiting to do like an attack. So if you get close to him, he will attack you. However, besides that, he's just going to keep running around and all that. And it's just very annoying. Oh yeah, here he's going to go insanely fast. Look at that. Meow! And I'm just insanely scared because you know he gets close to me done So I'm just kind of like waiting to I, I don't even know what I'm waiting for exactly. It's just like Look at him. What, what do you do against that? Apparently there's a way to like tiger drop him while he's running but like man that, that, The timing for that's weird and I just was not gonna bother with that. I was already weirded out by his running phase I don't know tiger drop his running phase <laughs> I'm just gonna put like the handicap of like uh, using beast mode to deal more damage so that it doesn't drag out as much, but this still ended up dragging out quite a bit. So here, I got the idea to perform a heat action against them. You know, I mean, I build up heat, you know, I mean, might as well, you know, kind of, you know, chip in some damage on them. However, that heat action is very dangerous because he does the spinny thing. And if you, and if the game spawned me on top of him, I would have already taken damage and it pretty much would have been a mute point. So, you know, <laughs> dangerous ass fight for sure. Oh yeah, I never mentioned this, but you know, I did mention I, op I recorded this game on OBS, so yes, I did play uh, this game on PC, and as you can see here, it is at 60 FPS, so, you know, very cool, very smooth, however, the resolution is admittedly weird, because I played this at like 1680 by 1050, and that's because my laptop just has a weird-ass screen, and pretty much it was either that or like uh, 2500 something, and when I put it at that resolution, the game slows down like a ton, so I'm ju we're just going to go with this resolution, just going to stick with it. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, my video. Uh, hopefully, uh, my commentary was still entertaining. I don't know. I kind of feel at loss because I'm also the boss fights kind of tend to blend together. And when it comes to Kiwami 1 mechanics, I'm not exactly the most knowledgeable guy on that. But Kiwami 1's mechanics and game feel is very fun. But I feel like most of his encounters... Uh, man, not, not so much, but still, uh, had a fun time no damaging this game. I mean, no quick video, very nice. Uh, Ken's in video. <laughs>